Hey everybody, just want to give a quick introduction before I get into the gameplay part of this video. About two weeks ago I was invited to an event by Frontier in Hollywood where at Universal Studios they showed off Jurassic World to a bunch of press and YouTubers and it included one hour of gameplay along with a developer at your side to help you with whatever you needed and this was all recorded for turning it into a video of some sorts and I have to be very honest I didn't really keep that in mind at the moment, I was just trying to spend that hour learning as much about the game as possible and trying as many things as I could. So I didn't really focus so much on making this video in its own, so there's not much of a great structure to this and I edited a lot of stuff out of this just to keep the more important bits. In any case, unlike many of the YouTubers and press at the event, I don't have any prior experience playing dinosaur games. Except for maybe Zoo Tycoon, but that's quite a stretch. So my focus here was really on seeing to what extent this game is intuitive and how easy it is to actually pick this up. And honestly also how much I am into playing it and how much fun it was to play it as somebody who's more of an outsider in these kinds of games than really a big Jurassic World fan because I think undoubtedly anybody who is a big fan of the Jurassic Park franchise is gonna like this game, honestly and at the very least gonna want to try this game for themselves. But for a lot of people like me who have never been that much into it, just kind of like the movies but never really been part of that community, I thought it was interesting to see, you know, how much does this game really work. So that will be a focus. Also there's one thing that I do want to say, and that is that this is probably my fault. I have no idea what happened, but somehow I messed up the audio there, so that the audio that I got that was later sent has my microphone really loud, uh, so it's kind of clipping at many points. So I'm very sorry for the horrible audio. I try to cut out my dialogue as much as possible, but it still is a little bit annoying every now and then. In any case, I don't want to make this introduction much longer. I'll end this video with some of my closing thoughts and a bit of a review of my experience, but for now let's just get into the gameplay. There's going to be a little bit of a tutorial to start with. Right. Um, and at the end of the tutorial, you're going to be given one of the story missions. So I don't know whether you want to see sort of some of the gameplay or, or something exciting or we want to get like a dangerous dinosaur that we can do some fun things with or whether you're just Ooh. more interested in like park construction. Um, but basically, depending on which one you want to choose, mm -hmm. we, can, we can pick that sort of as you get to that point. But for yeah. now, I'll let you... Uh, I, just, I just want to learn and see as much as I can. And you were the senior designer, right? I am senior designer. So, yeah, yeah. what kind of stuff did you work on? So, I'm kind of one of my my main uh, things is the the missions, the contracts, um, and kind of the story side of things a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, I got to work quite closely with um, John, who's uh, Platin, who's the who's the writer, mm -hmm. uh, to sort of put together the framework for the yeah, right the story we need uh, for the story for the. For the the story and it's sort of it was my job to sort of say we need uh, lines for this 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 and this right and he would, he right would take away and make it ah oh, that's really cool make it nice um, but I've also I kind of had had uh, sort of dabbled in, in a bit of everything mm -hmm. um, we kind of tend to dip our toes into lots of different sort of bits and bobs mm -hmm. um, but yeah uh, yeah, uh, off you go. honestly I don't even know where to start so, so well, you're gonna you're gonna get a little little tutorial bit uh -huh. to start with so just follow the steps that should right. help sort of ease you into the gameplay Right, uh, yeah. Controls and stuff, but basic controls are, you know, W, A, S, and D to move around. Not too dissimilar yeah. to Planet Coast, though. That makes a lot of sense. So the first, first yes. thing you do is to construct a Hammond Creation Lab, which is where you incubate all your dinosaurs. So Ah, right. Um, so we've got the UI over here. Yeah, and everything's going to be locked off for now, apart from the things you can do. So. Ah. So this is where it's trying to get me to go, or...? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Ah, right. So for now, you can sort of only follow this uh, tutorial path. Right, right. Well, then... Somewhere around here. Uh, should I remove some of the stuff that uh, I have here? No, you won't need to do that. Um, it, for now, you just need to plonk that down into that's it. Once it goes blue, it's sort of a valid placement. Ah, right, yeah. That's, that's the one and only time we, we do that. The next thing you need to do is, is uh, same again, follow the flashy light, or mm -hmm. flashing icon, and connect the path up to, uh, ah, right. to the building. So yeah. the paths work a bit differently to Planet Coaster in this one. This one is sort of a, a click and, uh, and then a drag and, and click again, and then ah, kind of so right. toggle between curved pass and non-curved pass with a space bar. With the um, space bar? Ah, yeah, right. But it, it might not let you do it now because we're locked into the tutorial, so... Yeah, right. Um. All right. Yeah, one by clicking on the lab then. Yeah, so that's the building we just created. And then we go to a hatching bay and incubate a dinosaur egg, I assume? Mm-hmm, you got it. 
So for now, you've got some genome for various dinosaurs, but you need mm -hmm. to have a minimum of 50% before you can actually create right, a dinosaur. Right. So we only have one option. That makes sense. That all makes sense. Release the dinosaur. I guess we could just go ahead and do that. It seems like the the whole pen over here is good. Oh, these in, these animations are absolutely insane. I remember watching the demo and looking at this kind of information uh, and like thinking that this was like a cutscene or something that was like completely prepared and yeah. animated beforehand. And at the end of this clip, I totally forgot that it was still in-game footage. Yeah, yeah, we're really, it's really crazy. proud of our uh, of our dinosaurs. You know, we worked very close to Universal. They gave us uh, mm -hmm. a lot of reference materials to sort of work with so we can make them as authentic yeah. as possible. And, and, you know, the guys in the animation team and the art team and stuff have, and the audio guys have done some amazing work. Yeah, this is crazy. Like, this is not just the movie scene. This is just me moving the camera right now. Exactly. So not, one nice thing you can do here is if you press the R key, you bring, uh -huh. you bring up their uh, their stats and you can see the dinosaurs' ah, needs right. and stuff. But you can also, if you click on the, uh, where it says STR002 up there, yes. uh, you can give her a name because ah. every dinosaur needs a name. Ah, oh, that was one of the questions that I had before I played this. And I haven't seen anybody answer this yet, but are all the dinosaurs also female? Okay, so, that's uh, good. Yep, yep, yep. So we are, um, you know, following the Jurassic law and as, yeah, as yeah. per... Jurassic films, every dinosaur is, is, a, right. is a girl, is a lady. Yeah. At least the advantage of that is, is not accidentally calling a guy Angela. That would have been horrible. Yeah. yeah. So this, this gentleman is Mr. Cabot Finch. He's like your mm -hmm. PR guru. Uh, and he's kind of there to help ease your way through the game. And he, um, he sort of just, just gives you some information on the various divisions we've got in the right. game. And this is the point where we are, for the, term, for the purposes of the tutorial, we're kind of locking you a little bit to one of these divisions. So depending on mm -hmm. what you want to see or want something you might want to get out for your video, um, the, there's kind of three quite different uh, experiences uh, here. So for example, the science contract deals in um, dinosaur disease and curing a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Entertainment gives you uh, a ceratosaurus at the end of it, which is a carnivore. So if you wanted, for example, to create some havoc, that would be a good choice. Right. The security mission is, is, a bit, is a bit different in the sense that you actually want, they actually want you to uh, let a dinosaur loose uh, oh. As a test, so uh, make your choice. Actually, that was one of the things that I wanted to ask. What happens when a dinosaur gets loose? How are you going to have to... We can find out. So we've got two ways we can find out. We can either go entertainment, and then mm -hmm. whilst the story mission won't ask us to do that, uh, we can do that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is the, the security mission itself, and that one actually wants you to do it as part of the mission. So. Right. I think I'll try the entertainment, so you kind of get the best of both worlds, I feel. Okay, um. so this is a contract, and as the guy said in the demo, these are kind of like uh, small jobs or tasks you can you can complete in in return for uh, some cash and mm -hmm. reputation. And reputation is very important because reputation uh, unlocks story missions and rewards and sort of helps your progression. Right, right. All right, I'll accept that then. So what you can see here is uh, the outline of your sort of power network. So these two regions ah, you see right. are areas where power is provided, mm -hmm. power is sort of um, produced at a power station, mm -hmm. and that is then transported around your park via pylons, and then to a substation, which is that little building you can see just, just there, and then what that does is that turns the power uh, into something the buildings can use in, in terms of the radius, so a building just needs to be touching the radius in order to receive power, assuming, oh, okay, right. assuming you have enough, Yeah, there's a finite amount of power generated. But I guess for now we'll be fine. You, exactly, yeah, you should be fine. We'll soon find out if we're, uh, if we're running low. Right. Let's try and connect that then. I want to play around with the paths a little bit. If I remember correctly, you can like make them... Cur oh! That's really easy. Wow. That is much easier to do than playing a coaster. It's good, yeah. We put quite a bit of work into it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's really easy to do. We're kind of trying to find a nice balance between something that's intuitive mm -hmm. when playing with a controller and you know, easy to grasp, but also you know, allows you to do what yeah. you want to do. Create some more unique path layouts than just kind of like little paths winding everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's really cool. Right, and you've just completed your first contract. Um, so let's tick that one off. Uh -huh. And you see that's earned you some reputation, um, which is also reflected in the little bars at the bottom. Right. So the middle one there being the entertainment division. And that should. And then the left is science, and the right is like danger. Is security, yeah. Yeah, right. It, yeah. And here we go. Here's our first entertainment mission. Oh, yeah. That's going to be dangerous. That's a lot of money. So, yeah. 
uh, story missions are definitely worth doing because the rewards are worth it. Not only will you get you know large sums of cash, but you'll get uh, other other rewards as well. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, it's a um, a cosmetic gene, but there different missions have different rewards. So in order to get some more genome, mm -hmm. you're going to need to uh, send your dig team out to go and get some fossils. So uh -huh. To do that, you need to uh, you, can, you can either go to your control room or go directly to the building, whichever's whichever's easiest. Ah, right. And then from there, you can um, go to the the globe icon is your is your expedition map. So it's showing all the exclamation points for the things that are of interest that yeah, so I should try to go to. These are all the, the dig sites that you've got access to at the moment. And if you mouse over them, you'll see that there are different fossils that can be found in each. And I would recommend going and looking in Europe for a Ceratosaurus. Okay. Possibly sort of the Algarve. Is there any particular country that... Uh, oh, there's not much choice. I no, I, I, go, I go Portugal. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately. Oh yeah, the rest is still locked. The of UK course. sites are locked yeah. off at the moment, but they they get unlocked as you progress through the game. Mm. And there we go. So what you'll find now is that your helicopter has taken off from your expedition centre, and then mm -hmm. they will head off and they'll go and perform an expedition, and they will return once they've got some fossils. Ah, that's very cool. I just want to kind of explore around here yeah, and see what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Have a play. So my rating is very low because I don't really have any dinos yet. I yeah, suppose. so you can click on um, you can click on each of these. These are like buttons, and they can give you a breakdown of uh, how your sort of rating is is calculated. Right, right. And again, these these can be clicked on to get some additional information too. So this this interface is our fossil mm -hmm. fossil center interface. So right. Here is where we extract the DNA from all of our, the fossils that we find. So as you can see, we've already got uh, a selection of fossils here, and you can start extracting the DNA from them in order to start you know, building up your genome. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here you've got the um, Struthiomimus fossil highlighted because we already had 50% of the genome. Extracting yep. this fossil will give you an additional 12%. Ah, uh, oh, okay. And, and there's no reason, basically, not to extract the DNA from these guys. Yeah, exactly. You just click all these things and extract them? Yep, yep. And you can queue them up, so they'll do one at a time. Right. Um, but the, the one we're interested in at the moment is the one on the right, which is the Ceratosaurus. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. That one first. So we should definitely extract that. And is it also a good idea to sell some of your fossils? So uh, probably not initially. Um, mm -hmm. What you'll find is that as you perform digs, you won't always get fossils back. Sometimes you get some rare metals or um, mm -hmm. other elements that can be sold for cash. And uh, once you've kind of got high percentage of the genome and maybe if you're a bit low on cash, then the selling a fossil is an option. But usually it's probably more worthwhile to, uh, to extract the DNA first. Right, right. Uh, but, it, but it's an option. You can. There's nothing to stop you doing it. Okay, yeah, it's an interesting option. And I see an exclamation point here at InGen. So which this, is, is this is our InGen database, which is like an information uh, repository. So as you uncover things in, in the game and, and sort of research new things or acquire new dinosaurs, uh, you unlock some, some more detailed information about it. So when, mm -hmm. when we, uh, I think when we accrue enough dino DNA or when we r retrieve some fossils from a dig site, we'll actually get some more additions to like your dinosaur uh, section, which will give you kind of like a history on the dinosaur, where the first fossils right, were found. Right. So some kind of useful trivia and information that... Um, but, you know, for those that want it. Oh, okay. Uh, I think something just happened on the fossils. Oh, are. wow. I have some amber. So that's oh, yeah, let's get that real that's quick. Definitely going to get you. And there's even more. Yeah. And but then, as I said, there we go. There's a, a non-fossil uh, big find which you can, can be sold. So by the looks of it, if you get like a, a mosquito in amber, it's much more efficient than uh, fossils when it comes to adding to your genome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the, the kind of the ambers... That's, that's the best thing to find. Yeah, you can find right. it, then you're going to get the biggest chunk of genome in one, in one hit. Right. Uh, but it's, again, it's, it's still it's, it's in your interest to try and get the higher the genome, the better the dinosaur effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I should definitely extract this while yeah. I'm at it as well. Right, right. No dinosaur DNA to extract. So I can just sell this. Yeah, that's, that's a rhodium, so that's just an element that you can, we have enough. So you can hit the um, you can hit escape or you can press ah, the yeah. legs up there. All right. So uh, we can uh, incubate your Ceratosaurus in the lab. That is definitely uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm speaking. <laughs> yep. Uh, hmm, but would it first be a good idea to try and build their, their whole keep first? Or you can do whatever you want. I mean, you, at the moment, you've got one dinosaur in that enclosure, um, which ah, is your Struthia Mimus. And if you were, you know, that way inclined, he could be considered a snack, your Ceratosaurus. Yeah. Or she, rather, Angela. Depends if we want Angela to get munched on. And she's also, so you've just, as you clicked on her, you can see that she's in an agitated state at the moment because her social need is low because she doesn't have Oh, friends. right. Yeah, that's a little bit sad. That's true. So we can always uh, make a friend for her. Mm-hmm. 
Um, or indeed, you can create yourself an enclosure for your for your ceratosaurus elsewhere if you want to keep things safe. And so, this is my first time ever using this, so I'm really curious to see how this all works. Ah, okay, so this is the removing tool. You just kind of remove everything. So, is there like a limit to the map? There is, yeah. As you can see, there it ah, yeah. shows you the, uh, the yeah. boundary yeah. as you as you approach it. I guess first build the the fencing around it, enclosures. And this is just the only fence that I can get to right so now. So what you'll actually find is if you click on the fence, it opens up a, mm -hmm. another band. And oh, at, at right. The, at the moment, you do only have access to the light steel fence. But as, yeah. you, as you progress through the game, you can get access to uh, right. sort of stronger fences and different different types. Right. And as per the paths, space bar allows you to do, perform curves. Yeah. Ah, that's that's really handy. So you want to get it a little bit more curved. So there is like a, a maximum length to it, but there, there is, yeah. And ge generally, as a rule, it's, it's if you try and um, build to your cursor. So if you put your cursor where you want your your sort of your curve to end up, mm -hmm. it, w it will then kind of try and conform to the point that you've. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's rather than yeah. strictly being sort of piece by piece placement, you're kind of you're leading it around. Yeah, yeah. That's quite easy to use, definitely. And I noticed for the path as well, it was just a narrow path, but. Does that mean that you get other paths as you go further into the you game? You do, correct, yep, yep. And you might ah, even right. have access to them now, in fact. Now you've got the tutorial section, that should be. Oh, so there's, right. There's wide paths and there's um, ah, more right. expensive paths that can have um, sort of like positive impacts. Because right. Because I think they, it populates with things like signage and um, mm -hmm. lighting and such. Oh, that's, this is really cool. The way that you can just kind of make plazas this way. You could create some really awesome shapes with that. I really love the path tool so far. It's really good, easy good, to good, use. Glad to hear it. So, as for the rest of the landscaping, I've heard that you do need some kind of water source yep. for your dinos to drink in. Ah, right. Need to get to this tool. So that's the um, the middle tab on there is for with the water right here. Yeah, yeah, and you can play with the radius on that, and that just sort of ah, oh, it automatically sort of creates a pond around it as well. That's easy enough. Right. So I do wanna kind of transition this a little bit more. And what other tools do we have here? Flatten and smooth. Oh, that's perfect. I'm glad that there's a smooth tool for the uh, terraforming. Yeah. And Keep things are nice. Yep. And I guess I need a little bit of forest for my dinosaur, or does yep. that? Yeah. So different dinosaurs uh, like different amounts of, of sort of forest or, or cover in their habitat. So it's kind of uh, dinosaur dependent. But right. Right. It's definitely in your interest to put something there. And then we've also got shrubs, which oh, that looks really interesting. It's really easy to do, like a lot of foliage this way is what I've noticed. Since the maps are so big and in Planet Coaster, you very easily spend a lot of time just putting trees everywhere. That's right, yeah. But with these brushes, it works out quite well. How do I like go further? How do I get my dinosaur in this? So you've got, you've got two options. One, one is to um, build a Hammond Creation Lab and actually attach it to this enclosure so you can release dinosaurs straight into here. Mm -hmm. um, the, other, the other option is to build a building um, called an ACU Center, uh, mm -hmm. which is the Asset Containment Unit Center. So it, that, that building comes with a helicopter. Um, oh, there the, we go. Yeah. Yeah. And they allow you to tranquilize your dinosaurs and you can then transport them. That sounds like the better option. Sounds enclosure a bit... To enclosure. Sounds like it's a better idea than just getting a uh, a hammock center, a hammock uh, center for every single keep. You should be able to space bar. Should also toggle angle snap so you can do free rotation. Oh, well. good point. Right, right. So if I get space bar, I can just ah, that's perfect. Yeah, right. All right, so this path should be hooked up. Yep. So there you go. We now have an ACU center with our helicopter, so we can tranquilize dinosaurs. Um, and now we've got. 50% at least of our Ceratosaurus. Yes, yeah, so time and to incubate. You, yeah, we can incubate one in there. We can release the Struthiomimus. All right. Here she comes. There's a friend for Angela. She looks about the same as Angela. But are there also like possibilities of getting like the gene mutations to finally end up with males or um, so you can uh, you can modify the genes in a number of ways uh, in, in terms of changing the appearance uh, you there are some cosmetic options in terms of skins mm -hmm. but most of the um, modification allow you to basically modify the dinosaur base stats right right but there are some modifications that make like slightly different looking dinosaurs so th there are um, cosmetic modifications that that um, change the skins of the dinosaurs. Right, so right. Some, yeah, some different variation. 
Oh, that's really cool. On their appearance. All right. She is. She's having a drink. So, so hopefully you should find that Angela's a bit happier now as well. Ah, she's got a friend. Yeah. Wherever she is, oh, there she is. And one thing you can also do is you can pop into the schematic view, which is the map one. That just, oh, yeah. And that allows you oh, to yeah, quickly see. find your dinosaurs and see sort of their states. Oh, and one thing that I did just notice, if you press the R button again, is that uh, she's hungry. Oh, very good point. So I need to place some sort of food thing in here. Indeed, I indeed which lives in the enclosures menu. That's it. Right. And these are herbivores, right? Correct, yeah. So, uh, so definitely something low like this, by the looks of it. Yeah. Wow. Don't That's think it take a lot too, of stuff too in here. Kind of to, uh, to, yeah. to meet. Or to a, a, a giant uh, yeah. tree. It's just All right. Just a tease. I'll get something like this. It looks like they are already uh, meeting each other. Socializing, yeah, having a chat. It definitely looks like they're having a chat. All right, so. Should that be fine for the both of them? Or? Yep, 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 yep. All right. Yeah, and what you'll find That's is that uh, feeders sort of replenish themselves over time, but eventually they can run out and they need to be, need to be right. replaced. Right, uh, right. Which is something your ranger teams can do. In the meantime, it might be a good idea to put some food. Yeah, food for, the, for the people, adventure. actually. Or, or for the people or for your, for your Ceratosaurus when, right, right. when she arrives. Uh, so we can already, uh, oh, wait, in enclosures, put up a, a, a live bait or so uh carnivores have additional needs that herbivores don't uh one of those needs ah, is a hunting need so right. if you put down a live uh sort of bait feeder what you'll find is that that can satisfy uh, oh, okay carnivores hunting need. uh it doesn't always but it but it but it can right right well we'll get that in there then ah there's a giant monorail that brings the guests to the park i see so and, oh we uh, so currently, you, you haven't got that many guests in your park. And yeah. That's, that's primarily because we don't have that many dinosaurs. There's not much in the way of an attractions for them to mm -hmm. see. Um, so uh, one thing we could do, and, and equally, your, di your guests can't actually see your dinosaurs because mm -hmm. you've got no viewing gallery on your, on, your, right, right. on your enclosure. So that's something we could do is, is add a viewing gallery. And they just snap, right. snap to the fence like that. Oh, perfect. Um, and then, as per usual, they need to be connected to the path. And this one also needs to uh, have some power supply to it because it's outside of one of those uh, sort of radiuses. Or radii. Right. Um, so in order so to fulfill that, that's it. And then we need to place down a substation. OK. So a small, oh, yeah, a substation. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, substations create the sort of turn the power yeah, into right. something the buildings can use. Right. And you can plop one of those down. That just needs to be connected to the pylon network. All right, there we go then. There we go. And so when that's finished, you should find that your uh, gallery is powered and ready to ready to roll. Great. And I think we also need some food for the people, maybe. There's not much for the visitors. Probably at the a moment. good idea. And there's something um, you can do actually here to see kind of uh, how how your guests' needs are looking and, and the things they want. And that's um, if you click on the eyeball icon on the left there, the eye icon. Right. That's our management views. And there's a load of options here uh, that lets you sort of see a, a visual representation of of the satisfaction of your guests in a park. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you click on the burger, which is a food satisfaction. So what you're seeing here is basically guests around, around these areas are unsatisfied because your food coverage is at 0%. Mm -hmm. So if we were to build a fast food restaurant nearby, what you'll see then is that that satisfaction level should change and you right. should find that you've got coverage. Right. Well, I have plenty of money, so I'm just going to put this somewhere. Oh, you can even snap them to so the path. So I yeah, didn't know get, that. These buildings do snap to path. These are kind of special Great. in that they, uh, they snap directly to them. That's good. All right, so I also love the animations on how you actually get all of the yeah, scaffolding and stuff going on around it. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? They're really nice touch. It's really cool. So in the meantime, can we check on the incubator and see what's... Ooh. Oh, I didn't hatch yeah, anything yet. It. Whoops. There we go. Well, this is going to uh, take a hit on your money. Make Ooh, money. that's expensive, yeah. Wow. She's worth it. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be worth it to let it loose on the guests and uh, <laughs> see what's going to happen, I think. I have no idea what's going to happen with that. Is that also like one of the core mechanics of the game? So uh, definitely sort of calamities are, are, are a thing and, and, and you know, accidents can happen and, and dinosaurs can escape. You know, much like, yeah. much like the films, it's, it's, you know, you're trying to build a very successful uh, park. But inevitably, something's probably going to go wrong. And you, can yeah. try and you can try and mitigate it and try and plan against it. But um, Life's going to find a way. Exactly. Yeah, I took the words right out of my mouth. So it's definitely part of the gameplay. And you, you find that it's not, it's not just you know, dinosaurs escaping, but also things like the weather can have an impact on gameplay. Yeah, yeah. You know, things can get damaged. Your power lines can drop out. 
um, mm -hmm. and lots of lots of challenges for you to sort of to deal with. And as you progress through the game, progress through the game, sorry, later islands sort of come with more challenges and, 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 and uh, difficult things for you to deal with. So. Is it also going to be like uh, having an effect on how well your park is going to be, uh, like, in terms of whether people are going to want to visit it? So, for instance, if you have like a big event and like one of the dinosaurs breaks loose and kills five people, will that also mean that nobody wants to visit your park so, anymore? So, uh, yes, in essence, yes. What, what you find is that um, your park rating will take a hit. So, mm -hmm. lower your park rating, the less guests would like, will want to visit. But also, you get a financial hit in the form of lawsuits because ah, right, uh, you know. Your uh, your your PR man, Mr. Finch, will try his hardest to uh, yeah you know keep such events quiet, but you you, you know, cost money. So is there any way to like check on the progress of so the yeah, incubation? Yeah, yeah, you see, we can see we're at 49%. forty nine percent. So the, generally, the sort of the bigger, um, more impressive dinosaurs tend to take longer to to incubate versus like the truth moments, which is relatively speedy. Right, right. Um, but that's okay. I mean, in the meantime, we can. Um, We've already so we've already created a new enclosure, but we've got some fossils there that need need some attention. We can uh, request a contract if you want to do some some work for a different uh, division. Mm -hmm. um, we can build some new more buildings. I mean, it's it's, it's up to you really. Uh, ah, so how do you strike up a contract somewhere? So if you go to the the first tab up there, um, mm -hmm. which is the management view. So contracts is your bottom right panel. Oh right. And in here you get the option to so so sometimes the divisions will approach you with with an offer of work and sometimes mm -hmm. you can request a contract. So if you click there, it should let you choose uh, one of the divisions. You can say, yeah, I would like to, you know, receive a contract from. Science right, or right. Security, and th and then you'll receive an offer. Perform a successful expedition to a dig site. So there we go. This is a relatively relatively easy uh, contract, and it's going to probably mm -hmm. be something you're going to do anyway. So it's definitely in your interest to sort of seek out contracts. And what you'll find is that. Um, so as you progress through the game, contracts will get harder and, and more complicated. Yeah, so. yeah. And I'm also a little bit curious for the in-gen database. Is this also something that might help you out by uh, being able to check the dinosaurs and see what their weaknesses are, or like so, how so you? So maybe we'll have a look. Have a look at the source there, because now we, mm -hmm. now we uh, we can create one. We can get some some stats. We can see that there was nine meters long. It weighed a ton. It's a carnivore. There's like where it's first discovered and such. Um, ah, there's definitely right. some kind of information and tidbits in there. But there are some things which you really just have to like kind of figure out on your own, as in like what kind of keep should I keep it in? What other dinosaurs is it okay with? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's right, definitely right. sort of a sense of self-discovery in there. Um, right, right. We don't want to spoil everything, but keep some things sort of a surprise. Um, I mean, obviously, common sense plays into it a little bit. If you start yeah. like carnivores in with herbivores, uh, it's probably not going to end well. Or equally, you know, some carnivores are um, sort of antisocial and, and they're very, very territorial. So. Mm -hmm. you know, you'll, you'll find that they could actually come to blows as well. Um, in fact, I had I had uh, someone someone playing earlier who uh, wanted to to know if he could create a sort of a dinosaur combat arena and just watch them them go at it. Oh. Which which you know in theory you can. There's nothing to stop you. The idea is to release her and then instantly catch her as so well. We can release her and then we can uh, get your ACU chopper to come and tranquilize her. Hopefully before she causes any <laughs> hopefully any, uh, any any harm. Um, right. So, th and there's two ways you can do that. You can either take control of the helicopter manually, as the guys did in the mm -hmm. in the demo, or you can actually request uh, that the AI does it for you. Right. Right. Uh, do, do you think it might help if I just put them um, in some meat in the enclosure, just so that yeah, yeah, she's going to eat the meat in there instead of try? All right. It seems, I'll try seems that safer then. to do because uh, so there's always going to be some variation on her her needs when when a, when dinosaurs released as well. So you right. might find that some dinosaurs come out hungry, some dinosaurs don't, some dinosaurs are thirsty. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to wait and see. Right, see and these are going. like all the stats that you can uh, change a little bit by messing with the genomes exactly, eventually. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Spot on. So all right. You can create a super aggressive, super <laughs> strong, you know, Ceratosaurus if you want to. Right, right. Can you also make one that was really friendly and not very aggressive? Well, you can't. You can't entirely change their behaviour. No. Yeah. But you can. Um, you can definitely sort of skew them to being very defensive, for example, rather than preferring right. to increase their attack stats. And then if you select the ACU helicopter down there, mm -hmm. you can either pilot it manually or uh, add a task for it to the AI to, to do this for you. Right. Uh, actually, no, I, I'm going to try it and do this manually, even though it's going to be a disaster. I've always been horrible with aiming these so, kinds of things. Uh, space bar to take off and then right. WAS and D, and, and, or you can use the controller if you prefer. Uh, I am even worse with controllers, so I'll try and do this just like this. Okay, and I think uh, Q and E should rotate, so you should pivot. 
Ah, right. This might help. Oh, uh, we've already got a dead dinosaur. Oh, gosh. So, so your, when it gets there to the go. Ah, uh, yeah. oh, no, why? I'm guessing the food didn't uh, satisfy. So is there a way to get closer or uh, yeah, so you can actually to control, zoom in? You can control the helicopter while you're here so to move physically closer and the right mouse ah, button right. also acts as a zoom as well. Oh yeah, I see. So you can also come out and you know, relinquish control and assign the mm -hmm. task. Now you've flown your helicopter here. Yeah, right? that sounds like a great idea. How do you do that? So if you hit the right click uh -huh. and then click on the helicopter. Right. And then add a task and then put the mouse, there you go, point at the, there we go. All right. Yeah, that's and much better. They'll take care of that. And in the meantime, I think she's having a, having a little snack on the... Uh, oh, which, that, which, is, that is gruesome. Which one did we lose? If you right click on the mouse just to come out of that interface. Uh, oh, there you yeah. go. Uh, I was Angela. I'm so sorry. Oh God. I'm so sorry, Angela. That's that's horrible. I'm sorry. I love that she still has stats like <laughs> yeah. Habitat Zero. I think if you click on her as well, you'll even you'll even see uh, who who killed her. So, oh. So if really? she was killed by another dinosaur, and you press the R key to bring up her her tracking data. Uh huh. Uh, Hunted down by. Oh right. There we go. So in order to transfer her to her new home, mm -hmm. we need to go back to our ACU center. Right. And select the transport team this time. So, just the one just the bottom. The transport team. And then we can click on the dinosaur and uh, point, click where the we destination. Want to go. Yeah, right. Exactly. And while we're also here, we can we can remove. Yeah. Say, yeah. If you click on that one. Can I already create that task, and they're just going to do this after yeah. this? Yeah. All right. So if you do that, that's it. So they'll come and they'll they will dispose of. They go. You have transport helicopters doing their thing. Right. It's quite nice to watch the uh, dinosaurs get picked up. Do these guys also move in packs? Like, should I b get a bunch more? So, the, well, they are uh, social animals, and mm -hmm. some herbivores are more social than others, and Struthiomimus are very social, so having lots and lots of them is uh, definitely not a bad idea. Right, right. Also, they're really cheap, and they, um, they incubate relatively quickly. Obviously, the downsides being that they don't have a particularly high dinosaur rating, um, and yeah. the dinosaur rating is a kind of reflection of how attractive they are to your guests. Right. Uh, so you don't need that feeder anymore. So one thing you can do is you can actually use the little digger icon on the left, um, uh, and you can demolish it, and you'll get a little bit of a refund from doing ah, that. Ah, right. There you go. Okay. So a little bit of a refund, and that's right. Get some money back. So you should find that your uh, Ceratosaurus Snappy herself is just hanging in there. Yeah, that is very poetic. Looks really strange. She's uh, she's ragdolling away. Yeah. She said, uh, I think uh, quite, quite a bit of effort went into um, sort of nailing the ragdolls on these, and they you know, react appropriately to physics and stuff. Yeah, so right. It's quite, quite lifelike, if, if slightly. Uh, slightly sad to look at. Uh, yeah, she's a bit, she's a bit dreamy, but it's okay. She's, uh, she's ah, sedated. Yeah. And the graphics are really amazing. I love the way that this game looks. Thank you very much. Especially in these weather effects. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they get more impressive. All right. Shall we say. Ooh, got some path elements on this one. So if you get like certain paths, you'll get certain elements on them as well? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll find that they should start auto uh, with, yeah. uh, with lights and, and, and boarding and stuff. Cool. And just because these are the really cheap paths, you don't really get anything on them. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you can, you can sort of craft your own sort of... Uh, Almost like Main Street areas yeah, you yeah. to, where you have like your restaurants and such, and you could use the the fancier paths, sort of as guest areas, and then for yep. the more sort of uh, operations based things or like paths leading to power stations. You know, there's no reason to use that sort of path. So yeah, that's great. It's up to you to mix and match. So it looks like your Struthiomimus is ready to release. And you should uh -huh. find your Ceratosaurus oh. is in there somewhere. There are many goats in here now. There How did that happen? Goats. The feeder just keeps. Pumping them out. If there's no one there to oh really wow, if there's no one there to eat them. They just run free. Although I don't know where she is. I think she might be hiding in the trees. Uh, very well, could be. Let's take the map. Oh, there she is. Oh right. She's invest oh. investigating her her fence. Lots of info which you can see over here. Yeah, That's cool. and, and I think you know clicking those will take you directly to the building. Right. Oh, uh, and this is the rating for the dinosaurs. Like how interesting yep. they are. Yeah, right. Yeah. So at the moment I think it hasn't quite updated, but they yeah. they lose their rating when they're sedated. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, oh, there she is. Having a little explore. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like she's very hungry right now, I suppose. No. Oh, she's 52%, she might be. So hunting 94%, that means that the hunting like instinct is all fine. She doesn't really yeah, feel so like she like needs like to her, hunt. Her need is, is met, basically. Um, right. And as that, as that decreases, her, her need to hunt will. Oh, I definitely need some kind of platform where you can look at the uh, enclosure here. So I could just attach one of these here, yeah, or... Should, should be able to, you might just need to clear the trees uh, to make enough... Ah, right, that makes sense. Make enough room for it there. So let's get rid of these. There we go. Lots of goats in there. Yeah. Guess can see the goats. Yeah, one of good. these. So... It might ooh. be a bit too close to your, uh, to your gate. It might fit just on... Yeah, there we go. It's on that end. Uh, I feel like... Oh, this might be... Uh, yeah, just need to rotate it round because it's just facing the wrong way. Oh, oh, right. Whoops. Well, mm. can I demolish it while it's still building? Yes, you can, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you'll get a partial refund for that, unfortunately. Right, right. Um, but that's okay. We're, we're not doing too bad for money. So if you just press Z or X, that will flip, flip it around. Ah, right. There we go. So these buildings snap to the fence. Um, but I think, again, because of the trees on that side, causing an obstruction so you might just need to deforest a little bit on there oh oh no uh, there you go you might clear should it be fine as long as it goes blue trying to find the right place there, there we, we go. go and again as usual it just needs to get connected to the path yeah and you should find actually the paths clear clear away through through forest so you can actually create some nice sort of winding path oh through, really oh through i'll through try forest, that which is quite nice i'll try that then so we've got a super dense forest going on here and uh, let's just add some paths to that then so the trick here is obviously finding the snap point on the building to, to fix it to, but yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, that's that's a really weird looking path. I guess you can remove paths by uh, getting another tool, or so you can you can use the demolish tool like you would for a building, and that can ah, actually delete right. delete sections of path. So you can tidy that up. Right, right. Ooh, I'm gonna have to see where I can connect this. All right, something like that should be good. Okay, uh, so how do I break the dinosaur out of so this? So you've got a couple of options. You can you can open the gate. Uh huh. Uh, or you can delete the fence. Oh, good. You can just delete the fence. Dino ah. Dinosaurs themselves can also escape. Um, you know, obviously this is based on their behaviour and their needs. So mm -hmm. they be could become agitated over time, and uh, if that happens, they can actually start attacking the fence. Right. And eventually, you can break out. Uh, your goats can also <laughs> make a break for it. Oh god, oh god. That goat is directly leading the dinosaur out of the yeah, I think enclosure. she might be looking for something to eat. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there she is, and she now knows. she's out. Uh, let's see where Snappy's, uh, where Snappy's headed. She's uh, decided she's going to go for a bit of an explore, and that's, that's okay. Yeah. I was hoping that she was going to eat some guests. Uh, no offense to the guests, but... Uh, <laughs> it makes good looks content. like she's not really hungry yet. She's, yeah. oh, she's getting a little bit hungry, but she's, she wants to go and see what's over there, I guess. Something's catched her, caught her interest, rather. Right. Ah, that's really cool. I guess she's trying to like explore the outer rim of the uh, enclosure. She's really sticking to yeah. the fence. There you go. That's interesting, actually. Like the AI of the dinosaurs, because in the films, like they're quite intelligent and they can figure out a lot of stuff. So has that also been worked into the game? Yeah. So I mean, primarily their their behavior is based on their on their needs first. But mm -hmm. we've got. Um, they obviously react to different stimuli. They um, they sort of have have, a, have a, a, almost like an agenda. They, they if there's something they want to do, they're gonna they're gonna do it. Um, right. But primarily, it's it's driven by their their needs at any given time. Um, so what you'd normally do if if you got a dinosaur uh, escaped and you were sort of um, clever enough to build some guest shelters, mm -hmm. you would open your shelters, declare a sort of an emergency state in the park, so guests would try and flee to your shelters. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that helps minimise sort of uh, guest dinosaur interactions. Right. Um, and then you would want to send or use your ACU team. That's mm -hmm. um, Use your ACU team to uh, tranquilise the dinosaur so you could safely return it to the to, to its enclosure. Right. Right. But she looks like she doesn't want to play ball. She looks like she's just happy to explore. Maybe either yeah. that, or she's not actually seen guests yet. That could be um, true. You know, she hasn't noticed that they're there, but the guests are certainly starting to notice that she's there. Really? Because they kind of make a break for it. Yeah, I think uh, they've kind of got far enough away that they don't think she's a threat. But you'll find that they, this, I think there's a couple of guys just coming down the path over there. Like they, yeah. They've turned around and gone the other way. So, uh, yeah. 
It is interesting to see, though, that they're not entirely vicious killers. They don't just, like, go out and destroy everything. Exactly, they just yeah, yeah. kind of keep acting the way they normally do. But if they're hungry, then you might get into some trouble. Yeah, they're animals at the end of the day. So, you yeah. know, if, if she's not hungry, she's just, she's just curious. Um, but obviously, right. that can change. Yeah, it very well might. But has she noticed the guests yet? I don't think she has. She might well have done. Oh, there we go. Oh. She's definitely seen. Has she seen someone there? Can't tell. It looks like much. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, a bit of an anti-climax for now. Yeah, although, although I'm definitely glad that people haven't died. Yeah, exactly. That's we've, good. we've loss of life has been yeah. uh, avoided. And eventually, somewhere in the game, you can get the T-Rex, right? That's got to be a little bit more dangerous for the people in the park. Yeah, T-Rex is, uh, is a bit is a big a big draw. And, yeah. Uh, and obviously, the more guests you bring to your park, the more things there are to uh, to munch on. Yeah, yeah, right. And the guests are also gonna like sort of react to it, like they'll run away from the dinosaurs yep. when that sort of stuff happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll try and try and flee and get to yeah. safety. And obviously, like, as I said, if you've got shelters, they will, and they're open because that's important. Mm -hmm. That's on that's on the player to do. That's a manual manual option, manual uh, interaction, should I say. Mm -hmm. um, you need to actually open your shelters for them to be able to flee into it. Right. Right. Well, I think that's all the time we've we've got. I'm all afraid. Right. Um, but I hope that's been been fun. Yeah, it's been a I lot of fun. Myself. I've never even actually really thought about the video, but like it's been super informative and super fun to actually check this out awesome. for the first time. Brilliant. So I'm really glad. All right. So that was the gameplay, and I know that might have seemed quite long, but. Honestly, in real life, it felt way too short. About an hour is hardly any time to figure anything out. But I do have to say, there are a couple of things that definitely stood out to me. For one, the fact that I managed to do quite a bit in an hour, despite being completely new to this game and not knowing much about it. Obviously, I had a developer on my side to help me with anything, but generally, I think this game is really intuitive. The UI looks really great, but uh, besides that, it works quite well as well and everything is just kind of easy to figure out if you've played any game that's remotely similar to this kind of deal. And it's just in general, there's nothing really too complicated about this. There are some things which I believe I kind of discussed in this, and I also discussed a little bit, I believe, in my interview, which I had later, which should also be on my channel, is that there are some things which players do have to kind of figure out themselves, like the way that the AI works, or the way that you have to put certain dinosaurs together, but that's just kind of part of the experience as well. On the basic level, I think it's quite an easy game to learn. Also, and this is a topic which I probably should have started with because it's something that stood out to me most, the graphics are <laughs> really amazing. They're just as good as I was hoping them to be based on some of the really rendered images that we saw in earlier trailers. So that is a huge plus about this game. Definitely some of the first shots that we were shown at the event during a demo which was public, I sort of noticed that I was forgetting that I was looking at actual in-game shots rather than just cinematic shots that were pre-rendered or something like that. And the same is kind of the reason why I, I really stated in the video at some point that you are looking at actual in-game shots and it's just in-game footage where you can move the camera around and do whatever, even if it looks super cinematic and really real. You can definitely tell that it's in the same engine as Planet Coaster. There are some very big similarities in terms of graphics, but overall it's, it's much better. It looks much better. Obviously, and this is one of the things which, for me, very honestly, is a bit of a, uh, a minus, I guess, because it's something which I am into. There's not much creativity involved in the game, it's really focused on management. And this is probably also why the graphics are honestly this good, since you don't really have much options when it comes to building things. The path work system is amazing, I'm definitely a huge fan of the paths. But aside from that, you don't really get to do much with the buildings. Obviously, I don't know how much this is going to change up to the final release of the game, and to what extent, you know, you get different looking islands, etc. Uh, but generally, it seems like it'll focus a lot on management, and that's really something to expect out of this. So if you're only into these kinds of games just for creativity, then I don't think it'll be quite the thing for you. But even then, I think it is quite easy to get used to for people who haven't done this kind of thing yet, since it was quite easy to get used to for me. 
And um, there are also some other smaller things. I think the dinosaurs look absolutely amazing. The animation is great. That just kind of fits into the whole category of graphics in general. But obviously, since this is a dinosaur game, you definitely want to make sure that those things just look amazing. And they absolutely do. And uh, some of the general tools, some of the smaller things are also great. I think the terraforming system, as simple as it is, it's just basic terraforming tools, is everything that you basically want it to be. It's nothing more, but it's good. And I think the fence tool is, for me, one of those small things which you don't really think about beforehand, but while you play the game, you realize it's actually genius. Uh, the, the way that you can curve fences and how easy it is to place fences and create these enclosures is absolutely amazing. So, big surprises in a positive way for me there. And as for the storyline, it seems like the storyline is going to play quite a big role in the game since everything will be management and really storyline driven. I actually had this really interesting conversation with the writer for the game, uh, who I just kind of found outside the booth and had some really amazing stories to tell about this. But the, the storyline is, is something which really drives the game in the end, I think. And it's not just you get plopped into a random setting and have to come up with your own park or you get some random list of uh, some sort of objectives that you have to meet up to. There's a real script and there's some pretty good voice acting, so it's really interesting to see that as well. And uh, yeah, that's really most of my basic thoughts. Most of all, for myself, I am very curious to see how much I'll actually be into this game. I think it'll be a good game, at least what I've seen so far uh, uh, if, if this if this trend goes for the rest of the game, if they keep up this quality, I think it'll be a, a fine game. But for me personally, I'm just not sure how much it is up in my alley, since even though I am into management, for me creativity is a huge part of that as well, and that's the sort of specific gameplay that I'm personally looking for. You might not see it in my Planet Coaster or City Skylines videos, because it's not something that my YouTube channel is really based on, but I've always been a huge fan of games like Rollercoaster Tycoon or even more obscure things like uh, Ski Resort Tycoon or just Zoo Tycoon, SimCity, all that sort of stuff. Kind of 50-50 because of management on one hand and creativity on the other. And I think this, this game might very well focus more on management and way less on creativity. So whether I'll actually like it is something that honestly I'm going to reserve until the release of the game. But so far, I think what I've seen at least suggests that this will be a good game. So yeah, those were basically my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the description, especially if you're coming over from maybe the Planet Coaster or City Skylines community, because I'm really interested in what kind of thoughts you'd be having about this game coming from kind of the same perspective as I do. And um, I would like to thank everybody for watching. And I hope to see you guys either in the next video, whenever that's going to be, or perhaps in the interview video, which I'll be publishing today as well, in which I get to interview some devs of the game. So yeah, that's it for now. Bye guys.